So since publishing my first hands-on look video of the new Wahoo Kicker Run treadmill, you've had a bunch of questions, things they didn't cover in that video or my previous post. This video is gonna be 25 questions that you've had that are now answered that I didn't previously cover. It's really as simple as that. Check out that full video up in the corner there for that entire experience. Here's the quick specs in the treadmill as they were known previously. And with that, let's get straight into the very first one. The most popular question I had, which is why is there not a safety plate or cover on the back of the treadmill? And there is actually, you, it's kind of hard to see in some of the shots, but if you look carefully at the back where the belt goes under, there's actually an entire cover there that keeps anything being sucked in underneath the back of the treadmill. If you're not familiar with treadmill safety issues, one of the concerns is that either kids or pets or objects like a ball can get pulled underneath the back of the treadmill. It's actually not unique to Peloton treadmills, despite them getting a big old thing about that. Uh, it can happen to most treadmills. However, it's more concerning for heavier treadmills that like the Peloton Tread and certainly here the Wahoo Kicker Run and others. Okay, so next up we got a fun what if question that someone asked. One of the core new features of the Kicker Run is it called Free Run Mode, where basically the sensor tracks where you are in the the treadmill at all times. The sensor's under the front of the console there and basically judges how much distance between you and the front of the console and changes the belt speed accordingly. Again, the whole thing is explained in the video, super cool. Their question though was what if you took a towel and just happened to place it in front of that sensor? Would it immediately speed up and you'd fly off the back of the treadmill? Wahoo says no. They actually detect if something is artificially close to the sensor and they will not therefore increase the speed of the treadmill uh, because they detect something is blocking it. Number three, will Wahoo system app support it? Yes, running workouts will be supported by the Wahoo system app. Uh, structure running workouts will be supported at launch whenever that happens in the June-ish or so timeframe. Next, number four, why the 250 pound weight limit of the treadmill itself? In other words, the runner weight limit, people that can be on that 250 pounds of the maximum weight limit. Uh, Wahoo says that was their initial like basically standard practice, standard protocol uh, weight limit they use for all their devices. That's just kind of what they started with. Uh, but it sounds like they're hearing the feedback there. For context, most of the treadmills in this ballpark in terms of uh, price tend to be at least 300 pounds for the uh, runner weight limit there. Wahoo says that, quote, we plan to explore increasing the specification to a higher weight limit prior to launch, but cannot confirm it at this time. They did note when I was there, and I mentioned this in my previous video, that they designed the treadmill for a much higher weight in the 250 pound limit. Uh, so my guess is, again, we'll probably see that by the time they start selling it. Oh, and then just a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, uh, YouTube says that only 18% of you are subscribed and 82% of you are not subscribed to the channel. You can do a huge favor, just hit the subscription button down below there. It's totally free, of course. Uh, it really does genuinely help out this channel and the video quite a bit. Next, if you've got a structured workout loaded, we'll automatically follow the gradient in Zwift or another app. Uh, and Wahoo says that in the case of Zwift, the user will have an option to disable grade control if they want to in Zwift, um, or they can always override it using the uh, basically paddle on the left hand side to change the gradient. So if you don't want to go up and down the hills while doing a structured workout, you can disable that if you want to or leave it on if you want to. It's your choice as to how you want to suffer. Uh, next, do you have to use Zwift? Another really common question. Uh, no, you do not have to use Zwift at all. You can use any number of third-party apps. Uh, they have an API kit that third parties can use. Uh, and there'll be both third parties as well as Wahoo's own first-party apps, including the system app, but even just a console app that I'll talk about in just a second as well. Next, speaking of Zwift, uh, will they support FTMS from other treadmills? FTMS is basically the uh, Bluetooth transmission protocol that's used for both treadmills and trainers and technically any fitness equipment uh, that you want to control or receive data from. And up until this point, Zwift hasn't controlled other treadmills. This is the first treadmill that I'm controlling. Uh, I checked with Zwift and they confirmed that yes, they are be going to go ahead and start controlling treadmills via FTMS, in particular for gradient control. Doesn't sound like pace control is there yet. That's a whole different like regulatory ballpark of hell. Um, but gradient control is a big one, so it'll automatically can control the gradient to match that in Zwift. They didn't have a time frame yet for exactly when that's going to happen, but they said that that's in the plans, they're already working on it, and that's the best I got for you. Uh, next, what is the deck height? What is, in other words, how high is the deck of the treadmill off the ground? Uh, that's useful for people that have shallow ceilings. So if you have a shallow ceiling in your room, you have your deck height plus your own height plus some margin of bouncy error as you run because you bounce up and down. Point is that deck height is uh, 30 centimeters. Uh, and here's an image of that right there. 
The next question is, what is the exact footprint of the treadmill? Obviously, you can see it's big. I talked about the belt length earlier on, but I didn't have the full footprint listed. Boom, also on the screen right now. Okay, next up, number 10. Why belts as opposed to slats? Uh, well, here's their words first, then I'll go into my words. Uh, I asked them that, and they said, quote, the slat designs are very noisy and provide a surface that is artificially compliant. We evaluated a slat design and found the excess give absorbed too much energy and did not simulate outdoor running as well as a properly designed deck. Uh, and I actually agree with them on that. I've, I've long talked about slat-based treadmills not being my cup of tea. And I understand that people like different things. Some people like vanilla ice cream, some people like chocolate ice cream. Obviously the vanilla people are wrong and I can't change that. Uh, but in terms of what I like from a treadmill, I actually don't like the slat design. They noticed some of the absorption issues there. I also feel like it just, it's a weird sensation sometimes running on slats, but again, to each their own. Uh, but that is why they did that there. Uh, also, they noted that they want to be one of the quietest treadmills on the market. Something I talked about in my video, it is insanely quiet for a treadmill. And I've got a bunch of treadmills here. That's something that I'll test side to side uh, down the road from a review. But in terms of like initial sort of thing, uh, it was a very quiet treadmill. The next most popular question after the slat thing was, is the three horsepower motor enough? And the reason why is that people look at a lot of higher end treadmills, $10,000 treadmills, et cetera, uh, and they look at that three horsepower motor and they say, it's not enough. These other higher end treadmills uh, that go the same speed have a four and a half or whatever the case is horsepower motor. When I asked Wahoo about that, they said that the reason they got away with that three horsepower motor is because they did a ton of work on the speed controller for that motor. The thing is that actually makes sense to me. If we look at treadmills, if you've, if you've been in the treadmill industry, you know that treadmills haven't really changed in like 20 to 30 years. Like it's mind boggling how bad the tech is. And arguably this is why this treadmill is so interesting to so many people is that treadmills by and large suck uh, today. And so this is one of those things where it makes some sense anyways that a tech company can come along and go, we can design a more efficient treadmill that does faster things, better things by focusing on the smarts as opposed to focusing on pure horsepower. Now again, We'll have to see how this works in real life longer term. As I showed in my video though, I'm essentially a 200 pound dude and I was running at a 430 a mile pace and the treadmill had no problems in ramping that up fast and slow. I showed in the video going from a 530 a mile pace uh, down to a stop, a standstill in about two and a half seconds, which no treadmill in the market can do today. It's mind boggling how fast this is. So that initial proof there seems to be in the pudding. Long term again, as I said in the video, I have no idea. We'll have to find out together. Next, will Wahoo's iOS and Android apps support it? Yes. Uh, in fact, Wahoo says they think this is actually the way a lot of people end up using the treadmill. Well, they'll have their uh, iOS or Android apps on a tablet or something like that in front of them on the treadmill and then have whatever entertainment it is up there, whether it be Netflix or uh, Zwift or whatever the case is, uh, something else up there where they're just using the app for all the stats and data. Speaking of which, people asked, will the app show elevation gain? Yes. It'll show elevation gain or both a workout and post-workout. Next, is the $5,000 price for the Kicker Run competitive? Uh, and this was a super interesting thing. Uh, I didn't talk a lot about the price in my initial video besides stating what it was, but I didn't get into like comparisons and all that kind of stuff. And I really won't do that a ton here either. I'm gonna do that down the road. Uh, but there was a lot of people that fell into one of effectively two camps. Uh, the first camp is people that said, this is crazy, way too expensive, and it didn't make sense when you can buy a decathlon treadmill for six or 700 bucks. And there's another camp of people that know treadmills, uh, and they know for a high performance treadmill, this is actually incredibly reasonable compared to most of those. And in particular, the speed is the most important part here. Uh, this treadmill goes faster than most all the treadmills at this price point, not most, but virtually all the treadmills at this price point or anywhere near its price point. It goes 15 miles an hour. Most of the treadmills that you'll see in the 2000 to 4000 ish or so range uh, go roughly 12 miles an hour. And that may not seem like a big difference between those two, but for higher performance runners or even like front of the pack runners at your local 5K, that is actually a big difference. You need that faster speed that most of those cheaper treadmills don't provide. And as you go down to those six and 700 hour treadmills, you then get into weight limits and speed limits and all sorts of stuff that they don't tend to be super accurate, et cetera. So then you look at the options that actually have 15 miles per hour of speed and almost all of those start at 10,000 bucks plus. So to see a treadmill at 5,000 bucks, again, those people over here are like, tell me more. And I think that's why there's so much interest from a lot of people that don't even care about all the tech. They care about like the speed performance specs. And then once you layer the tech in there, it's like, this is super compelling. Uh, but again, we'll have to see how, what people react to that uh, longer term as well. 
Next, is the market saturated? Uh, treble market saturated. I saw a lot of comments like, why do we need the treble, etc. As I just explained, I don't, I don't think so. At this price point, there's nothing. This is like the no man's land of pricing and they stuck the landing with something that has much higher specs than this no man's land. And so I think, I think it'll actually do really well, but, and the comments seem to indicate so, but we'll have to see. Will the Wahoo rival watch support it? Uh, not for control, no. Wahoo says that uh, given that there's other ways for them to control the treadmill from an app perspective, free ways as well as paid ways, uh, and the fact that the Wahoo Rival watch isn't going to be continued in the future in terms of there will not be a Wahoo Rival V2, V3, something if you haven't seen that video where I talked with Wahoo CEO last month or whatever it was up in the corner there, you can dig into that and kind of their thinking there, et cetera. So point is they're not gonna focus on developing more uh, new features for that watch. That said, the watch will connect to the treadmill just fine as a pace source like any other foot pod. So that is still there today, uh, but you can't control it, which honestly, again, most people don't really want to control a treadmill from a watch. So I don't think that's a, that's a huge deal. Um, does the treadmill broadcast other metrics uh, besides your pace, for example, cadence and, and so on? Uh, yes, they will broadcast cadence, pace, ground contact time, vertical oscillation, current grade, and side to side position uh, in that stream over Bluetooth. Uh, next, is there running power integration? Uh, Wahoo's exact quote, we do not currently have plans to show running power metrics from the kicker run treadmill. But then they continue, our custom motor controller gives us the ability to collect and analyze massive amounts of data. This may lend itself to useful user-facing metrics we can add in the future. This actually makes sense to me. And the reason is Wahoo's always been as a company skeptical on things like cycling dynamics and running dynamics, et cetera. And they have done some of the running dynamics efficiency metrics themselves, but they've always kind of looked at it and like, who's actually using that? Opinion I sometimes share with them, depending on the exact metric we're talking about, but it makes sense for them to not focus on that right now, which again, I think we'll see them down the road, maybe do something in that realm, uh, but not today. Next, is elevation broadcast to other devices? Uh, yes, the individual application will track or process that. I mean, that's something that uh, the application actually calculates the elevation based on like the grade of the treadmill uh, and then the total accumulation of that. Uh, next, what type of time of flight sensor is in there? So I mentioned earlier on that time of flight sensor is in the front of the treadmill. That's the thing that tracks where you are on the treadmill. And then as you get closer to it, it goes faster. Well, it makes the belt go faster. And then as you go back, it slows the belt down. And that all happens at like sub-second intervals. So very, very fast. Uh, but the question is what type of time of flight sensor? Because there are different types. There is ones that use optical or use LiDAR, et cetera. Uh, this is an optical time of flight sensor, meaning it's basically just looking at the distance between two objects at an incredibly fast rate, and then judging whether that distance is increasing or decreasing how far away you are, et cetera. So optical is the, the long and the short answer there. Next, what is the planned warranty period for the Wahoo Kicker Run? Uh, Wahoo says right now they're planning one year for the US and two years for everywhere else, but quote, they will evaluate this as they get closer to the uh, launch and you know basically start shipping a units. And uh, I think you need to evaluate this a lot, Wahoo, because one year is not going to cut it, especially with your track record on hardware, no offense, but let's be honest, first gen hardware, and you haven't necessarily always been like cozy kittens. Uh, so if I look at Peloton, I pulled up their warranty chart, which by the way, was a crazy warranty chart of all these colors and I appreciate the detail, but just make it simpler, Peloton. Um, in any case, the point is their chart for their treadmill starts at a minimum of two to three years, depending on which component you're talking, and then goes up from there with the ability to purchase additional years beyond that. Wahoo needs to match whatever the heck Peloton is doing for the Peloton tread, that base unit, that Peloton only charges, only I guess you could say, um, only charges uh, 2,500 or so bucks for. So Wahoo needs to match that in all respects. Uh, and then they should at least overshoot that when they can because they have a more expensive treadmill. So that's my, my two cents there, but we'll see you again by the time you, by the time you get to launch. Uh, next, will there be integration with the Wahoo Headwind fan? That's their uh, smart fan that's primarily aimed at the smart trainer side of it that has integration like heart rate integration and uh, pace and all sorts of stuff. So it automatically adjusts the fan depending on what you're doing. Uh, yes. They're making adjustments to deal with the difference between cycling speed and running speed, but they say by launch, it'll be there. Next, are API documents already available so third-party developers can start developing for the Wahoo Kicker Run? 
Wahoo says yes, they're already talking to companies about it. Uh, we've seen some companies already talking about that a little bit, uh, aside from Zwift, which of course was shown in my video and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but Full Gas, uh, they do primarily cycling videos, not primarily entirely cycling videos today. Uh, they've already said they're super interested in this. Uh, they are owned by Iron Man, so you can see an obvious crossover there uh, having that, so that's interesting. I'm sure companies like Kinomap, which already have long done uh, FTMS control, are gonna support this as well because Kinomap supports like every device on the planet ever. Uh, so I suspect we'll see them do this very, very quickly. Uh, and they have a massive library of stuff as well. So that's super cool. Okay, getting towards the end of this list here, uh, when will I start testing it in earnest? Uh, so I flew for that previous video to Atlanta where Wahoo's headquarters is. I'm in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, I flew there all by the way, I paid for by myself. I don't, I always cover my own travel to all industry events, whether it's Apple or GoPro, whatever the case is, I pay my own way and all that fun stuff. Flew there, did that testing there, um, and then I flew back from there. So I don't have one here in the DCR cave yet. However, by like happenstance, Wahoo actually has a hardware engineering office, not in Amsterdam, just about 20, 30 minutes south of here. Uh, and they do a lot of the validation of the hardware there. So they're gonna take one of their current prototypes and they're basically gonna hand me down to me uh, to get some kind of trial time on that over the course of the winter. So that's not the final production unit. Uh, it's not a unit I'm keeping, by the way, they're just a bit of a loner there. But what that will allow me to do is over the course of the winter, both myself as well as my wife, uh, who trains for Ironmans and all that kind of fun stuff, uh, to get a lot of time on it and to start to like have a longer term view on things like the free run mode and all the different nuances of the treadmill. Then as they get closer to their launch in the summer, uh, they'll send over a final production unit that'll basically base my final like review on. So if I can validate things like accuracy and technical stuff and all that goodness there, but with the context of having many months of actual usage on this unit uh, to kind of give that uh, background, if you will. Uh, which all gets the question of, will I buy one? Uh, and a very common question I saw as well. And that's a funny question for two different reasons. Uh, number one is that when I walked into the door in Wahoo's headquarters, I met with Chip Hawkins, their CEO, and he stopped me and he said, I've got to tell you, Ray, I'm just, I'm warning you now that when you start running on this treadmill, I'm going to cost you a lot of money because you're going to want to buy one immediately. Uh, and I laughed and, you know, I, I rebuy a ton of devices here. As you know, I don't keep devices. Um, after the review, they all go back to companies or they sit around or the company gets around to picking it up here, et cetera. But I go out and then rebuy most of the devices I test. Most watches, I'd say like 30% of the trainers, the ones I think have a, a future for future updates and stuff like that. And they're here so I can do firmware updates, et cetera. So that gets back to the question of, will I buy this unit? And obviously it's a little bit too soon for me to decide on that. Uh, but what I saw there was incredibly cool. One of the most common questions I get at uh, trade shows, industry trade shows, et cetera, is what's the coolest thing you saw today? And I feel like the last few years, the answer has been like, uh, I don't know, it's just all kind of the same. Like the, the pace of sports tech innovation has definitely plateaued a bit and that's not a bad thing, like not at all. There's certainly cool little features, but I feel like back five, seven years ago, it was like a rocket ship of amazing new stuff uh, versus these days it's like, yeah, you get like one or two features that are cool on any new product and then that's it. But nothing like holy crap cool. And this was the first time in a lot of years where I reached holy crap cool. Like that run free mode was substantially holy crap cool. Uh, now, that does not mean that the entire product will end up being holy crap cool, right? You have, you still have to like make all those things work together. Things like accuracy and reliability and the hardware and all those things have to, have to stick the landing. Uh, and Wahoo has lots of history, both good and bad, in whether or not they can stick that landing. And then hopefully give you the advice that you need to decide whether or not you need to convince your uh, spouses or accountants or whatever the case is that you need to, you know, find an extra 5,000 bucks somewhere for this thing or spend that 5,000 bucks on ice cream or pasta, whatever the case is. With that, hopefully you found this video interesting or useful. Whack that like button down below or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.